years ago, I bought a little harp kit and I made my first harp, a little 26 string. And that started me on an incredible journey, which is still happening today. And I just wanted to give you a little look into my life. Um, is it something about building a harp and playing a harp that to me is extra special? And what's happened through the last several years as I play at concerts and things, I share what's a passion for me. People come and talk to me and several once in a while say, hey, could you build me a harp? Well, that's led for me to be able to put these custom built harps on the website. And so I want you to check that out when you get a chance to go to www.thecalmingstore.com. At the same time, I also wanted to take you on a journey to building this harp. Um, I buy a kit from music makers and I like working with them because they put all the pieces of wood together, they've cut the angles, but then I start doing the gluing, the screwing, the, the uh, sanding, and the putting the finish on, putting it together, installing the hardware, stringing it up, and uh, then one of the most amazing things for me is when I hit, touch that first string and get the sound, the voice, what I call the voice of that new harp. And I want you to experience that as well. So I'm going to take you on this journey. We're going to take all of these separate pieces of wood and we're going to put them together and we're going to make a harp and it's going to have a beautiful voice. And I wanted you to come along on the journey because I think as you see it come together, you're going to appreciate what all goes into a harp. I find that the harp is probably the most beautiful instrument in my opinion. A friend of mine says when the harp shows up, it's the queen of instruments and all the other instruments bow. I think that's a little egocentric there, but um, at the same time, the harp has always attracted wonderful attention. People always gravitate to it. I get people coming up to me all the time about, you know, some people tell me I've never seen somebody play a harp before. And so it's part of my passion is not only playing the harp for people, but as I make harps, making them available for people because um, it happens that once you get exposed to the harp, you begin to realize what an incredible instrument it is. So come along for the journey. We're gonna build this harp and I think you're gonna see a beautiful instrument come out of this pile of wood. <laughs> so come along, enjoy. Okay, so the first step we're gonna do um, is to go to the box that came and make sure to check off the list. There's a list in the front of the instruction booklet that gives you each piece that you're supposed to have or number of pieces. Make sure you have all those because you don't want to get halfway through your project and then find out you're missing something. And Music Makers is very good. As soon as you call them up, they will send you the piece that's missing. They won't charge you for it or anything. So just make sure you have all the pieces. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start. These are the two side pieces that we have here. And we're going to lay them by each other, kind of open them up like the leaves of a book. And we want to find the bottom, which is this piece here. And we're going to make sure it fits correctly with the angles. So if you put it this way, the angles aren't going to work. The angle's coming this way and then it goes out. So that's not going to work. So you want to make sure that you have everything fitting well. Now the other thing that that angle's not fitting well either, so that we're going to turn it this way and there and sure enough, there it is. So you want to that's one of the great things you want to do, one of the things you want to remember is you want to dry fit these pieces together before you do anything about gluing or anything. So we make sure they're fit. Um, you, the other thing is you want to make sure that there's exactly fitting all the way down. So there's not a gap over that way or back that way. You want to make sure it's coming straight on out like that. As soon as you have that, so you want, let me go over that. You don't want it that way or that way. You want to make sure it's right right adjacent so that it comes straight on through. As soon as you have that, you're going to take your screw. Um, these are, they even include the, the bits along with it. This, it's an amazing kit that um, Music Makers does. So hold it firmly and make sure you don't drill at an angle that's going to come out or down that's going to come out on the, on the side. Make sure that you're at an angle that's going to go through the wood and then drill that in like that. I already drilled that so it went in real easy. And then what I do is I put a screw in there just to make sure that it's gonna stay while I drill the other holes because I don't want this shifting on me. 
So I'm going to push that little screw in part way. And then I'll come back with this screw and I'll do the other. There's, there's three holes on this side. I'll drill those. And then we'll take that screw out. We'll put the glue in and we'll screw it in for good. And then that'll let that dry. And then we'll do the other side the same way. Okay, so on the gluing part, you want, you're going to want to make sure you spread over a good, you don't want it slopping over the sides, but you want it nice and a nice amount there and on both surfaces. So you want to make sure that everything you're gluing has the glue on it. I use this wood glue, um, Elmer's wood glue. This is, um, we're in Australia right now, but at the same time, I was no, uh, Steve noticed that this is made in Ohio, so I guess you can get it. To, so anyway, but just make sure it's a good quality wood glue. Usually if it says wood glue, it's going to work. Then you put the pieces together, and then you begin to put the screws in where you put your pilot holes. So you're going to screw in there, bring those screws in tight, and then we'll go over to the other side and do the, exactly the same thing. We finished that side, so we're going to come here and we're going to flip it over to put it on that other side. And I like to put this other tailpiece, we'll be screwing it in a little bit, but I want to put it in place because this is going to help us hold the, the, the right angles for putting the screws in there. So I just set that there and then we'll come back here and we'll just go ahead and do, drill the pilot holes to it exactly the way we did on the other side. So we'll get back to you in a minute. So now that we've got both of the bottom pieces, we're going to stand it against this table here. And we're going to take the top block and we're going to do the same thing. It's just a bit smaller. Now, one thing I will caution you on, don't just set that in there and expect that all to fit. You've got to do one side first, get those screws in, make sure everything's nice and flush. And then you'll see there's a little gap on that side. So you're actually going to have to twist and pull this one to get them to fit. And what the reason for that is there's a little bit of warping that goes on while this thing is in transit. So you're going to want to help coax those back into their proper proper place. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and do the drill again. And um, let me just hold that real tight. Put the drill down. Once again, make sure you're going to the angle of the side. Okay, and we'll do a screw to hold it, just like we did before, and basically it's the same steps, just a lot smaller. All right, thanks. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to lay the frame down. We've got everything screwed together now. So we have our basic box frame. And the next thing we want to do is put the struts in. These are, these are the two struts that come pre, pre done. And so what you want, you notice that they're angled. And you also notice that the back of the harp is narrower than the front of the harp. So we're going to take the narrow part and this is, there's two, two lengths. There's a wider one which is going to go on the lower one here and so we'll we'll slide them down in there and they should be fairly tight and i'll show you one thing we'll check once we've got the second one in place we're going to do the same thing for this one as well and that one's a little bit looser we want to make sure that it goes below this but not out the back and they're not going to do that because they're narrower than this but just make sure it's below here the next thing you want to do, my friend Steve helped me out with this. He, we want to take a bar here, and we want to make sure that that's not pushing, pushing it out and making it warp. We want to make sure there's a nice straight line on both sides. If you don't have a nice straight line, then you're going to want to take this out and sand just a little bit off. Do it just a little at a time. You, it doesn't take much. And uh, once you have it set to the right width, then you're just going to put the glue in there and on both edges and then we're going to put a little clamp on both sides and it's nice to put a little piece of wood between because you don't want to mar up your nice finished surface of the harp here so you're going to put a board on each side and then the clamp 
and clamp that together so that it dries nice. And it's going to take about an hour to dry, then you can remove the clamps and we'll go on to the next step. So now we've got the glue in place, the, the um, struts in place, and we've got them clamped softly, not real hard. Like Steve told me, don't get too excited. And uh, we'll leave that for about an hour and then we'll go to the next step. Here we are. So our next step is to deal with the front soundboard. That's this part here. And this is also a part of it. We're gonna be gluing it on the back side. This is a strengthening rib. So when you pull this out of the box, you're gonna notice that there's dimples that are here. And that's where we're going to be drilling holes. See all along here, there's a dimple, dimple, dimple there, okay? So if we're on the back side, you don't see them at all. So that helps you know which one's the front and which one's the back. We're going to, first of all, drill the bottom one and the top one. And another thing I want to just mention, and it talks about it in the instruction, but just to mention, you'll notice that they go a little off-center here towards the top. Don't let that worry you because that's the way the strings come out on the basis of the neck of the heart. So don't worry about that. They're in the right place. Once we get those holes in, we're going to flip it around and we're going to draw a line from this hole to that hole, and then we're going to line this up along that line for the glue up, and we're gonna make sure that the top of this goes past the top hole, and once we have that there, we're gonna draw around it with a pencil so that we know where to put the glue. And then we're gonna glue it down, and then we're gonna put a heavy weight, or we can clamp it, there's several different ways you can go about it, to get this in place, glued in, and if you want to, if you're going to figure yourself to be famous down the road, you can sign it right now and put what number of Harper this. This is going to be my number 28. So I'll be signing it and putting number 28 and the date that I made it. So this is the front and that's how we take care of it. Okay, I want to make one small point here. On this, we're going to use a larger bit. This is a three... 32nd bit that's supplied with the kit. And so we're going to count up 12 of these holes in the 12th one. We're going to use large and then large all the way back. And then from there forward, we'll change bits and go to the smaller because we have the larger strings coming in to the bottom here. And so we use larger eyelets, and so we need a larger hole for the eyelets. So just wanted to make that little point to make sure... Oops, sorry, get my finger in the way. Just wanted to make that little point so that we can get that... Uh, keep things... Um, I'll just confess that I forgot to do that on my first one, and I had to go back and re-drill after I had everything together, but it, fortunately I didn't split anything out. Uh, you want to use the drill press because a nice sharp bit in a drill press has a lot less chance of any of the uh, wood splitting out. So you don't want that to happen because then that leaves your front of your harp with a little flaw in it. And we really don't want that. So you can use a hand drill to drill these holes and just be very careful that you stay very perpendicular. What's really nice is you have a, a drill press, which my friend Steve has, and that, that makes it really easy. We'll just um, start it up. <laughs> should have mentioned also just to let you know you want to come at it very slowly because if you go too fast you'll dig out some pieces of wood and that's on the front and that'll show uh, so we don't want to have any gouges on the where the strings are going in so just come in slow with the drill make sure it's a nice sharp bit and so when we're going then we'll go on to the next phase where we trace this out okay the next step we're going to be putting the the back on and I've done a little bit of pre-work so we can show you. First of all, we'll take it and, and set it up in there. Well, this is the front. Set it up in there. And then we mark back here and then cut that off so we don't have too much to sand. The second thing we, we have done is, you see this pile of uh, shavings here? 
this edge was a little bit high, so we shaved it down so where, it, where it's right flush. You want that to be right flush because you're going to be putting this trim piece on there, and you want that to be able to glue all the way on there because we're going to be gluing here and then putting brads along here to hold it. And once those brads are in there, we don't want them to show, so we're going to put this trim piece over it like this. So that's kind of the steps. So that's the back, and then the front, remember we put the, we put the rib in here, and I just took this off. We had a big weight on it. I showed you a picture of it. And I went ahead and signed it. This is my number 28. And so now, remember, we only drill, drilled two holes. So now we're going to go back to the drill press and we're going to drill all of the other holes and then this is going to be ready to begin to uh, to put in to place for the top. Now we're, as you can see these are a little high I'm going to have to come in and trim these as well. And once we get those trimmed down then we're ready to glue so that's will be that'll be the next step I show you in the video. Okay so we're going to go to the drill press again. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, we've got this all nicely fitted. We have this all shaved to where it's just the right height. So we're ready to glue. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the glue along here, all the, all the perimeters. And then we'll set this in place. And then we're going to take these small brads and we're going to nail about every inch apart here. All the way around except on the top. We don't nail here because there's not a trim here. The other places here have trim, so we, we're going to cover these nail heads up with the trim. Now once you've got the nail brads in by nailing with the hammer, you're going to want to come back with a nail set and punch them down below the surface of the wood because when we glue the trim piece, we don't want that being held up by the, by the brad. So that's our next set. We're going to do that on the back. And then we're going to flip it over and we're going to do it on the front. And then we've got our basic sound box ready to go. So this is, an, this is another little trick I'd like to show you. Steve showed me this, um, whose shop I'm using. I'm going to be putting some glue in this area here. And it's really cool to just put a little tape, masking tape right along there. So you can go ahead and paint it in. And as soon as you have the glue down, you pull the masking tape off and then put it in place and then we'll have glue on this edge here as well so we're getting ready to throw the glue down and then we'll be nailing it in with the brads so that's the next step i'll take the time to make one more caution as we're putting these little brads in the side here make sure that you're angling them in if you angle them out you may come out and spoil your wood and i just want to show you i did that here on the bottom with the plywood here, I'm going to have to pull this one out. See that nail coming out? Because I went in straight, but the back is angling in. So you got to make sure that you're angling these nails back. Just a little tip to pay attention to. Okay, so we've just finished. First of all, we glued the back, and I already had sanded this with 240 grit or 220, and. Um, we just finished gluing the front, and I just wanted you to see the nail placement there. And we've got all of the holes drilled. It's all glued. So we have our basic box here. This is the sound box. This is where all the sound is going to be coming out from. And that's why we put holes in the back, so the sound can get out. <laughs> also, so you can get your heart strings in. So, so anyway, they're ready pretty much for the next phase. And we'll take that up on the next piece. Okay, now we're getting ready to do the next step, which is going to be putting the trim pieces on. 
And I've already prepared this trim piece. I'm just going to take you down closer here. Um, the first thing we did was to um, put the screws into these two here that's on the on the bottom piece. And that's going to be rounded later on. But right now it's at the same angle going in that's going to accept the tail of the pillar there. And then we bring, we want to make these angles right here. We want to make that angle fit really very closely. That, you want that to match up very nicely. We're going to be sanding that later on as well. And if it's done right, it's going to look like that wood just continues to go around. So not much, you shouldn't be able to see much joint. I've got the other piece over here ready to go as well. And I will also show you we brought it up here and they made them a little bit longer so we cut it off so that's just a little overhang because we're going to be sanding this when we get all the pieces on because we have a, a headstock that's going to go on here that accepts the other end of the pillar so um, the other thing i want to say is that you'll notice right here that this is very sharp along this edge so i'm going to take this over to the sander and i'm going to round that edge off because if you leave that sharp like that, it's going to catch sweaters and all kinds of little things. And so you don't want to do that. You want this harp when it's finished to be very um, soft to the feel, rounded, um, not sharp on anything, so that um, it's going to be very comfortable to hold. So that's you want to just make sure of that. So that's our next step. And then once I get these glued... I'll show you how we're going to tape it, or maybe I'll go ahead and tape it, and then I'll show you what it looks like once we've taped it. We'll put the glue on the wood, both sides, and then we'll be taking some tape here. And instead of trying to do clamps, we'll just take pieces of tape and pull it down, and pull it down, and pull it down, about every inch or two inches there, just to have a nice firm hold to let that glue dry. So that's what we're going to be doing next, is just gluing these down. First of all, we do the front, and then we'll turn it over and do the back. And then that's going to be all, except for the, the headstock up here and the pillar to the neck. Um, that's the only gluing we've got left. Okay, so here we are. We've done the glue on both sides. And you see how I have the tape disperse to hold the hold it down and we've come to have a nice joint at each side and those are going to get sanded those sharp areas on the very edge are going to get sanded smooth um, so we'll take care of that later so while we're sitting here waiting for the uh, glue to dry on the tape job we don't have to just sit here. There's something else we can be doing, and that is to take the neck. I'm sorry, the yeah, the neck, and um, begin to to sand it down. It has quite a few quite sharp edges, and I've already been doing some sanding on this. So we're trying to get all of the sharp edges that are on the what comes, trying to get them smoothed out. I'm using 80 um, grit paper to get this done. You could use a um, uh, sander, hand sander if you want. Um, you have to be careful you don't go too far. You don't want to take it down too far and go, uh oh. So anyway, I did it by hand. Um, I'm starting to get it smooth. And that's what you want because when somebody grabs the harp to play it, you want it to feel really nice. You don't want a sharp edge or something that's going to feel like, you know, anyway, kind of like it's repelling. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't want to get too esoteric here, but anyway. Um, so that's what we're doing now. We're just getting this. I'm going to take it and go with a 240 uh, fine grit uh, sander to get it ready for the finish. And uh, we're going to do the same thing to the pillar. I'm going to get that out in a minute and I'll take a video of that before we start on that. So uh, stay tuned. Okay. Okay. Um, got all the tape off. Everything is dry. The next thing to do on this is going to be to do the shaping of the corners. And uh, I still have to get the top block on as well. And then um, I've also spent time sanding on the neck and the pillar. And um, I'll just show you all of these sharp edges are now rounded out. 
everything's been sanded and down to 240 240 grit and um, we're just about ready to fit the neck and the pillar together and glue and pretty soon it's gonna look like a harp okay so a little catch up here um, I've gone ahead and glued the neck in with the pillar so I'll turn this around so this is the neck and this is the pillar and what you can see here is that the neck fit into the pillar and you want to pre-test that before you glue it once you're happy with that then you can glue it and then there's two big screws with square heads that are driven in here and I used a hammer drill just to make sure they're nice and tight and you let that pull everything in tight so that your joint is nice and nice and close there and then we're going to take the sander and just sand that just a little bit we're also going to take some wood plugs and put in here and hide those holes so well I'll be showing you that in a little bit here and then the next thing we're going to do also is we're going to take this headstock and it's going to be fit onto this. We're going to, first of all, we'll take this over to the sander and just do a fine sand to make sure that's all 100% level and perpendicular. And then we'll glue this on. You'll see that it's already got two pre-hole drills. There are two long screws that will go in there, glue, glue, screw in, and then we're going to start shaping this to um, get these sharp edges and things off. So I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit. So that's our next step, uh, what we're going to be doing. The other thing we're going to be doing today is we're going to be, uh, I'm going to use a quarter inch round router and we're going to make nice soft corners on each of the edges here and then we'll sand those down real soft and smooth as well so that's kind of what i've got laid out for the day and um, so stay tuned okay so <clears throat> we had gone over that we glued this uh, neck, the pillar and neck together and we have glued on the top block as i was describing and so now, before we start rounding things off, the next thing we want to do, which I've just done, is <clears throat> I've placed this, make sure it's centered, and Steve helped me make sure that. Bring the bottom of the pillar down to the slot that it's meant to be in, hold it firm, and then drill. There's a pre-sunk um, hole here. So drill with your seven and three quarter inch drill bit here. Screw that in, and then what we did is we took and stood it up like here looks like a heart doesn't it and we took a pencil and around this have centered we drew the lines because what we're going to do is use that line we're going to start taking out the extra wood and shaping so that we get this nice and rounded back here right now if somebody brought this against their shoulder, it would be real sharp. So we're going to take all of that out of there and round it so that it all meets up here and looks a lot nicer. So that's the next step. Thanks. Okay, so the, one of the next things we're going to do I, um, is to drill, pre-drill this, and we're going to be putting a dowel in here. Now, how we drilled this is we had this in place with the screw at the bottom, which we showing you there and then this fitting on and then we met we marked the center there and then we, we drew a line across those marks and we did the same for this end as well so you can see I, and so we found the center and pre-drilled and we only want to drill it one and a quarter inches deep with the 3 8 inch drill bit and then this one when we drill it we rock it forward and back a little bit so we have a little bit of play in there we're not going to glue this dowel in here this is to keep it from shifting laterally the strings are going to pull it down so um, this is just to keep it from being sloppy up on the top then we're going to then what we do is we put this back 
into the hole and then screw down at that end and that's pretty well going to have the harp ready to start putting the finish on um, well I've got to put these plugs in first but pretty close and then uh, we'll start putting hardware and start putting strings so um, it's starting to look like a harp okay we put the two pieces together we have the finish on I uh, used a hand rub finish which I really like there's no drip marks and things you have to deal with and after putting those two pieces together the next thing we do is down here at the holes for the strings to come out, we put these little eyelets here. The first 12 are the larger eyelets that go in the larger holes. And then right here with my finger, there we go, you'll see the size changes. So we go to the smaller hole the rest of the way up. So those are the brass eyelets that the strings come through that hold the strings without um, wearing on the wood. So that's the, um, that's the next step. Also notice I put the, the feet on the bottom as well. Now the next step is going to be to put these bridge pins in. And just like there's 12 larger holes in the bottom, we also have 12 larger pins up here and then right here we switch over to the smaller pins and we we take the pin now let's take this out of the way has an allen wrench to it and the hole is pre-drilled so we just thread these allen wrenches I'm sorry these these bridge pins into the holes and we get it up close and then we take this piece of wood that they put as part of the kit it's five eighths inches and get the focus to come in here. We'll continue to thread that in until it's even with that hole right there and all the other ones. So that's the depth. And then we'll just continue to install those all the way through. The next step is also up here on the neck as well. We're going to take the bridge pins. They're threaded. You can see there's a fine thread in them. And we're going to bring them in here. And then we're, we push it hard to get the thread started. And then the no other nice thing that um, Music Makers does is they give us a brass fitting that fits into our drill that fits up to the edge to the square edge here, which is the where the tuning wrench fits eventually. So we don't have to keep cranking with our hand. We can just set the drill in there and go zoop, and it goes right in. So um, I'll pull the drill over here and demonstrate that for you. Okay, so I'm going to show you that bit there. There, get a little focus on it. See it's square inside, so it fits right over the edge there. And then you just turn the drill on, put a little pressure, and then, so then as you drip, see it just automatically goes straight in. So that makes it a whole lot easier. And then we'll go to the other side and we'll use that same piece of wood to make sure that we have it the right length as well. And so I need to go out just a little bit further, but you can see the other two I've done are right at the exact 5 eighths inch there. So that's what we'll do for 33 times also. And then the next thing I'll be showing you is how to string it up. We're almost there. Okay, so once we have all of the bridge pins in place, and we have all of the tuning pins in place. This is what it's going to look like. I'll go over on the other side to the tuning pin side. So there we go. So now we're ready to start putting the strings in. Just about ready to hear some music. Okay, 
Okay, so now I am trying to, not trying, I am putting sharpening levers on. You can see I've done the first four. And I like to use a different color lever for the C and F strings. And what we do is we'll, we'll take this lever, this is the Jordan levers that I'm using, um, and I'm going to put it in the engaged position, which is up, which pushes that piece right there against the string. And first of all, have the string tuned to the note that you want. And then we're going to see if I can do this one handed. We're going to slip that under the string and then slide it up there. See there, we've got to have it slid up there. And then we'll move that up and down just until we get the note that we want and we'll use the um, I've got the tuner on my phone so I can't show you what the tuner is doing but we'll we'll play the note and then we'll keep moving that up or down until we get it to the right note that's uh, that half step sharper the sharp like C sharp or B flat to B natural or whatever, which one we're working on. And um, once it's in place, then we'll go to the bottom screw there. We'll drill a hole right there. And we'll put the screw in and that will engage it in place. Now you'll notice is there's a, there's a place for the top screw as well. It's a smaller screw. It just helps to keep it solid. I like to put all of the bottom ones in first so that I've got them in place and then I can come back in, change the bit because it's a smaller screw and we can put those in and then we're done. So we're just about ready to deliver this harp. I wanted to share the sound of this harp with you. We just finished making it and it's a beautiful design. Uh, has some great sounds, a lot of good resonance, and I'm going to be playing Psalm 27 for you. I enjoy making these harps because there's something about making an instrument and then playing an instrument. I believe it helps me understand it better. And I find that uh, this is, since this is my number 28, what happens is a lot of people hear me play and then they want me to make them a harp. And so I've started making a page on thecalmingstore.com available so that you can call me and we can arrange for me to make you one. Uh, this is a beautiful sound. I want you to hear it. And um, this is coming out of chord progressions that come from Psalm 27. Psalm 27 is a, a daily psalm. It starts out, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my strength. Of whom shall I fear? And it's a beautiful psalm that gives us the strength to meet the day and with all this crazy stuff going on, I think we need a little bit of encouragement. So listen as I play Psalm 27. Mm -hmm. 